Hi, and welcome to Elasticsearch 101. My name is Jessica Garson, and I'm a senior developer advocate here at Elastic. Previously, we learned all about how Elastic works and how to get our data into Elasticsearch. In this episode, we're really going to be focusing on how to explore our data, how to analyze it, and how to draw meaningful insights from our data. We're going to be discussing Discover and KQL, building a dashboard together, and we'll also be talking a lot about how to create queries to learn more about our data. So we're going to be talking about query DSL and ESQL. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to learn a little bit more about our data set. So a great way of doing that is to get started and discover. So if we click where it says discover here, we can actually create a new data view. A data view allows us to learn a little bit more about our data set, and it's actually the first step to creating a dashboard. Let's call this 101 video, and we can actually call it National Parks. And then our index pattern, we can select can be the index um, National Parks, and that's just an index that we have that contains some information about national parks in the United States. And we could select a timestamp field, which is date established. So from here, we can actually um, now see that we actually have a breakdown and we actually see that 100 years ago is selected. We can actually change and edit this if we wanted. If we wanted it to be 200 years ago, we can actually update that as well. So let's say that we wanted to take a look um, for national parks that were located inside of California. We can actually use the state's keyword California. So from here, we can also start to see if there are parks that are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So what we can do is the same sort of keyword search, um, but we can actually say World Heritage Site keyword true. And so we can actually start to kind of take a look and see some of the data that is World Heritage Site. And KQL is just one of the many query languages inside of Elastic. Um, that stands for Kibana Query Language, and it just lets us kind of kind of get started and playing around with our data set and learn just a little bit more about it. So now that you've created your data view, the next thing that you can do is you can create a dashboard pretty easily. So if we go to the side panel and click where it says Dashboards, and click where it says Create New Dashboard, we can create a new visualization really easily. So we just want to double check that our data view is set to the same one that we were using, the 101 video national parks. And so from here, we can actually start um, here and let's actually do states keyword. Um, and we can actually start to kind of see the top five values. Um, we can actually change this up to let's we can actually make this the top 10 um, and we can press save and return here um, and now we kind of have a visualization of our top 10 um, national park or states with national parks um, and we can actually add another panel here too from lens um, so we can actually again start dragging and dropping some content in. Um, so from here, we can actually um, start to kind of see the number of visitors. And then we can actually kind of add in here states as well too, um, and start kind of taking a look in here. We can actually, um, so we can actually make this the top 10 as well and just kind of start to kind of play around with it. Um, and we can actually see we have um, a warning that this is, um, so we can actually enable accuracy mode to kind of make it just a little bit more accurate, which is kind of cool. And we can actually um, change this as well. We can get rid of it being a top 10. We can actually, um, instead of having it just be aggregate, we can just have it be everything. Um, and we can save this panel. Um, and return as well. So now we're starting to kind of get some visualizations and this is kind of a really quick introduction of how you can get started kind of creating a dashboard um, with Kibana. We can actually 
go and get to know our data better through some queries. Um, this allows us to kind of really drill into a couple of items, um, and it could be really helpful for getting to know our data set better. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scroll to where it says dev tools and you might see some code written. And that code is written in a language called Query DSL. And Query DSL is a full featured um, JSON style query language. It enables us to do complex searching, filtering, and aggregations on our data set or indexes. Um, and it is really helpful um, for working with Elasticsearch. It's one of our most powerful query languages that we have. Um, and it really kind of lets us kind of drill in and get to know our data just a little bit more robustly. So what we can do here is we can actually get started with it by making this get command. Um, and so we're gonna work with the same index we were working with before, national parks, and we're gonna do a search um, to find the top five parks with visitors. And you might notice in there's a field called source. Um, the source parameter specifies which fields from the original documents you're gonna want returned in your query results. So for this, we're going to want title, visitors, dates, and acres. So from here, you can kind of start to see kind of the data that we get back. Um, so we can see here the Great Smoky Mountains, um, the Grand Canyon, Yosemite National Park, Rocky Mountain National Park, um, Zion National Park, and those are kind of the top five. So that kind of jabs with what I already knew to be true about our data set. Um, from here, we can actually um, start to take a look at um, data from before 1950 in our data set. Um, so we can actually take a look and we can see the data established as 1919, 1944. Um, and we can kind of start to see which data was created before 1950. So we get to kind of take a look. Um, we could see that Glacier National Park was created in 1910. And we can actually start to kind of look at our data a little bit more robustly there too. And then from here, one of the features I really like about search is that we can actually kind of just start to kind of see like what matches. So we can look for results that have forest or mountain in them. Um, and we can actually kind of start to kind of see, okay, cool. There's Arcadia National Park, Denali Park, Sequoia. Um, and we actually start to kind of see the data um, that has both forest or mountain in here. So we can actually kind of find a little bit more of what we're looking for. And from here, now we can actually start to get a little bit more complicated with our data set. So we can actually take a look um, to see states that um, have, or states or national parks that have California as a state and our World Heritage Site. So we can just start taking a look here and we can actually see, okay, cool. So we see Redwood National Park and Yosemite, um, which is pretty cool. And then from here, we can actually start to um, kind of take a look here um, at parks by state, um, which is kind of cool as well, too. So we could see how many um, national parks are in which state. So California has nine, Alaska has eight, Utah five, Colorado four, Arizona, Florida, Washington. And so this is sort of like, a first step with getting started with aggregation. So we can kind of start to see, okay, cool, what's being returned and how much. Um, and so this is just kind of a very quick um, introduction into getting started um, with Query DSL. So one of the things that's really great about working with Query DSL is that you can really get back what you need and everything is really simple once you understand it. But there could be a learning curve in how long it takes to understand. So we have a new query language called ESQL, and ESQL allows you to start working with your data um, in a way that's more intuitive. Um, it lets you use a piped query language so you can actually work in a way that's kind of SQL-like. For here, we can actually run a very simple query um, and from here, we can use the from our data set national parks, and we can use this keep title acres, states and dates established. And from here, we can get back data that's sorted by acres from a descending. So we can actually also say that we only want five. And so from here, if we run this query, we can start to see 
um, a list of uh, national parks, um, their number of acres, and the states from here. But as you can see, we only have five, and it only will return back the top five. So if we change this limit to a thousand, we can actually um, start to get back per each state in a way that feels a bit more intuitive. Um, and also what's really interesting is that the order kind of matters here too. So if we, um, you know, change this um, around a little bit, that can actually um, impact the results as well. This is just one other way to kind of get to know your data just a little bit better. Um, you can also run ESQL in other parts of the platform um, as well too. Thank you so much for watching today. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about vector queries and semantic search options. See you soon. Bye.